Most of us with no criminal background think that we are incapable of turning to extreme violence or murder. But history has shown that even the most innocent seeming can, under certain circumstances, be capable of horrific acts. Tex Watson is a straight-A student and sports star excelling in football, basketball, and track. Leslie Van Houten is a homecoming princess and daughter of a school teacher. Susan Atkins is a member of her glee club and church choir. She is known as a quiet and reserved child. Patricia Krenwinkel is a Sunday school teacher who one day hoped to become a nun. All are from middle-class families. August 1969. Watson, Van Houten, Krenwinkel, and Atkins are involved in a killing spree that leaves seven dead. They are all followers of Charles Manson. The striking question is what occurred to transform these teenagers into violent murderers? Can anyone be turned into a killer? The answer may lie in a fundamental weakness in the human brain. Research is trying to uncover the power of group conformity and how leaders like Manson manipulate their followers. In the 1950s, psychologist Dr. Solomon Ash was among the first to examine the power of conformity. Ash decided he wanted to see whether there was something weird or special about people who followed crazy leaders or whether the average person under the right circumstances could be made to conform. The Ash conformity experiment is legendary among social psychologists like Dr. Benjamin Zablocki. Solomon Ash was concern was with conformity and he wanted to see whether he could set up an experimental situation in which people would be led by social pressure to deny the evidence of their own senses and go along with the judgment of a group on a simple question which had to do with the length of lines. The test begins with placing a subject in a room with a group of actors pretending to also be test subjects. Here's exhibit one. They are all shown a pair of cards. The first has a line drawn on it. The second has several lines of different lengths. The test subject is asked to pick the line that matches the one on the first card. Everyone else, all of the actors who are pretending to be experimental subjects, give the wrong answer. B. After all of these actors have given the wrong answer, the turn comes to the real experimental subject. The experiment aims to see if the test subject will ignore the group and answer correctly, or if the pressure of conformity will compel them to give the wrong answer. It's A. Initially, many test subjects give the correct answer, but the answer does not come rapidly. Most people hesitate. They exhibit externally the conflict that's going on inside them between the desire to be a part of the group and the desire to follow the evidence of their own eyes. But as the test continues, most subjects conform to the group and start giving the wrong answer. The desire to be accepted overcomes the desire to do what's right. Let's say. What's found is that 75% of the experimental subjects deny the evidence of their own eyesight A. and conform or go along A. with what other people have said. It was not because they had legitimate reason to be unsure, but because they were swept away by this power of conformity to the unanimous group opinion. This behavior is known as groupthink among scientists. Hey. It describes the power cult leaders wield when creating a unified group mind among their followers. In the case of Charles Manson, not only was he able to manipulate others in his presence, but his strong hold over his followers continued even when he was not with them. 